Do you trust the government uh, here in America or in your country as well? Um, I think that most of us can say that uh, we don't really trust our governments. The governments right now of the world have pretty much proven that they are not just secretly against the people, but openly against their own people. Um, government positions are supposed to be a position of public trust. In other words, when you become a congressman, a senator, the president, a prime minister, whatever the position, you are supposed to be someone that has a higher moral character than the average person on the street. Um, you're not supposed to be one that's just promiscuous with your relationships, uh, you know, a sex pervert. You shouldn't be uh, known for being a drug addict or, um, you know, a drunken bum or something like that. No, you should, you should have some moral character. Uh, same thing with a police officer. Police officers should have a higher moral character. Again, they shouldn't be out um, getting drunk and things when they're off duty. Um, there's supposed to be a higher moral character there. And what we're finding many times is that the exact opposite is actually true. A lot of these government officials, um, I don't trust them morally, but beyond that, um, clearly, they're not ruling with the best interests interests of the people that they're supposed to represent. All right. Now here's the question: You don't trust the government, okay? I don't trust the government. I mean, Joe Biden. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't need to say any anything more about that. But um, what do we do? What do you do when your government has gone rogue? And like I said, it's not just America. I mean, America is kind of leading the way right now in terms of bad government. But um, what do you do when you look and you say, I don't trust these people telling me what to do anymore. Um, well, number one, my recommendation is you better get to know where your rights actually come from. Because the government cannot be trusted with your rights. Your rights come from your creator. Um, your creator is not a random process of death and destruction that took billions of years to get you to where you're at right now. Uh, that's not science, okay? Here we have uh, beech trees with little buds and things on them. And then over here, we have a fir tree. Hmm, and they're the same. They come from the same ancestor. No, they didn't. Well, they, it, through billions of years, they've, we got to the place where we have uh, beech trees and fir trees now. Uh, that's stupid. That's foolish. Nonsense. Uh, a amazing creation requires a creator. An amazing creator. And knowing that is not some kind of a bad thing. Atheists just blow my mind, you know, that they, they'll come out with things and they just hate God. They're, they're just God-haters is what most of them are. You know, agnostics I have a little bit more grace for because they're saying, I don't know. That's fine. That's the scientific method. Saying, I'm not really sure. Let me do the test. Let me examine the evidence. Fine. That's scientific. Atheists, that's not scientific. Atheism is, I know that there is no God. Well, then that means you have to have experienced everything. You have to have seen every part of the universe out there, uh, outer space, and every place on earth, you know what's going on at all times? Um, I don't think so. Um, so, I have some respect for people that ask questions, right? But this thing of, they're just, the atheists, they just hate God, they hate the concept of God. Uh, that's foolish, because to hate God what you're really doing is you're, you're simply saying, I hate the fact that there's a being out there that can actually protect me and a being that actually has given me free will. Well, yeah, but he allows bad things to happen and whatever. Yeah, because that's free will. I mean, he can't just control people. I mean, again, oh, why does God allow children to have bone cancer or 
children to be abused or, um, you know, uh, dogs to be used for experimental purposes or other animals or, you know, all this stuff. You just come up with anything. Why does God allow that? Oh, okay, well, what's the opposite of that? You don't want God to allow it. That's right. God should stop all of that. Well, then God's going to control you. There are certain things that would be against God's will. You want that controlled in your life? Really? I'd rather just have free will. But then again, you know, I guess I'm just weird for that or something. But the fact is, there is a God. You look at this out here and you say, okay, the invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse to not believe in God. Now you can have excuses to say, I don't understand God. I don't understand why he does certain things or whatever. That's fine. There's no problem there. You're asking questions. You're scientific. You're making scientific inquiry into what's the truth about God? What should I believe about God? It's not a problem. But when you deny God and you say that there is no God, eh, you're getting into some issues there. So, um, once you realize, though, that you have a God, that there is a God, and I had to go off on a big tangent there to, to get back to the point here, God is in control. God knows what's going on. Yes, God gives people free will. Government officials have free will. That is true. But the government officials are not able to just simply come in and um, do whatever they feel like doing. Because while man has a free will, God also will judge man and punish man for sin. Let me just show you this real quick here. If you can see down there, that's a spring, a side hill seep. Someday I'd like to actually, um, I don't know if you can see the a thing here, how it's actually running, coming out of there, going down that way. I don't know what the water flow level is, but there's a couple side hill seeps here. There's one here, and then there's one over that way. And the thing to do is you kind of build it up, and then you put a pipe in, and then you can go down the hill. I'm going to head down to the trail now. Get over here so I don't step in the swampy mud. But, uh... One of the things about walking talks that some people, I guess, don't like or whatever, or it's just the way it is, but, you know, you have to kind of stop occasionally and just explain some things, what you're walking around and, and whatever. But getting back to what I was saying here, um, God is real. And if you have any kind of wisdom at all, you could say, again, be agnostic about it, say, I can see that the arguments for there being a creator, yeah, I can see that. Uh, who is he? How does he work? How does he, what does he think? What, you know, whatever, I don't know. I'm trying to find that out. Um, I don't really want to join organized religion. Well, that's smart of you. But um, I realize that there is something there. Okay. Um, Through this area here once you realize that and here's a very important part of the video and I'm sorry I'm going off on tangents here but you realize okay I do believe that there is some kind of a creator God there an all-powerful being that made things happen um, then he would be in control of my rights he would provide me with the ability to be free he would be the one that would say, okay, I'm going to protect you and keep you safe, you know, if you're trying to really give me credit and acknowledge my existence and whatever. All right? See, that's the whole point here. Let me show you something else quickly. Beautiful wildflower here. They come out in early spring. This is called a uh, trillium. Right there. Very neat little flower. And they have three, three leaves. There's a bunch of them in the area here. Okay. 
And um, they're also called birth root. Um, there was some kind of a thing, they're an herb, I guess, and they help out with childbirthing or something. I think that they ease some of the pain. And because of that, um, they were almost extinct for a while because, you know, a lot of women were out there trying to find them and uh, to ease the pain in, in childbearing. So, but thankfully there, there's quite a few on our property here. Um, pretty neat to see, especially in early spring when it's still fairly cold out, like it is this morning. Um, wow, there's a, there's a really big one down there. You can see that one there. It's a huge one. <coughs> But uh, getting back to what I was saying here, all the distractions, um, the government is corrupt, okay? And God is the one that can protect us. Down to my trail here, okay. Ugh. Now I can walk without ducking and things in between stuff. When the government is corrupt, you realize that your rights come from God. I mean, you have to realize that all, at all times, but I'm saying it really becomes clear. And you say, I need God, my creator, to protect me. And Romans chapter 13 talks about these rulers that they are ordained of God, that they're allowed to be put into those positions. God will put them in many times because he's going to punish the wicked people of a nation. But it says that rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And every time I hear these hirelings in the 501c3 church buildings talk about Romans 13, they'll always leave off, I think it's verses 4 and 5, where you have it talking, it, it clarifies who these rulers are that you're supposed to submit to. It's rulers that are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. So when rulers start to become a terror to good works, and they start to say, you know, we need to outlaw the Bible. You need to uh, accept sexual perversion, you know, and they go down through the, the whole list. You need to take uh, chemicals into your body that go against your religious beliefs and convictions. Um, when you start to get into that, uh, it's wrong. You don't have to do that. And you're not dealing with rulers that uh, God will recognize. Some pretty flowers on this tree here, let me show you that. Very neat. And um, ultimately, that's what leads to revolutions. And uh, this nation, America, could use a revolutionary war about now. Um, quite frankly, is one going to happen? Probably not. Uh, will a civil war happen? Well, at some point in time, I believe, yes, but uh, not sure when that will happen either. But um, going forward, do the politicians here in America, do they have our best interests in at heart? No, they don't. They really don't. Uh, Donald Trump is saying a lot of good things because he's an actor and he's being given a script to read off of. I don't trust him, I never have and I never will. Just that simple. Unless, I mean, if he would get saved, genuinely born again, and he'd come out, and the world would really hate his guts, and and you could see, yeah, there's definitely a change in him. Um, well, okay. I'll give anybody a chance for that, but that's not very likely. Uh, just to be very frank about that. Um, so, just sharing my thoughts on this whole thing, because I just... I was thinking about this the other day and I thought, you know, betraying the public trust when you are in a position of public trust, um, that's a problem. It's not supposed to be that way. And so going forward, you have to realize that Christians uh, have always been considered by the lost world to be a sect. You read that in the book of Acts. Um, to uh, be non-conformist and um, to be 
you can't call Christians anti-government because we're not anti-government. Government, excuse me. Oh, that's not true. Uh, Christians are not anti-government. But what we are is we realize that the government should follow certain rules and should be just with their laws. And uh, when the government goes against law and common sense and they start to go after the good works of people, you just simply say, I'm not going to follow that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. So there I, where I felled a bunch of beech trees down in here, we have these the beech trees get this disease on, on them and it kills them. And so been using those for firewood, but haven't been able to get back down into here this year for firewood sawing season because it's a little bit further away from where we do the firewood up that way. But um, on a bit of a hill now, <laughs> a little hard to walk and talk when it's a hill like this, but we'll keep going. But um, just kind of mixing this stuff in with uh, the controversial things I need to say in with a lot of look at this flower, look at that, and whatever else. Um, that way, hopefully, the uh, a lot of the people that hate this ministry won't bother watching. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, and I realize a lot of you out there, you know, that uh, have been loyal subscribers to this this uh, channel here, this ministry. Um, I know a lot of times you're doing other work and you like to listen to me, so you don't mind my ramblings. And uh, I keep seeing these little purple violets. I'm wanting to pick one here. When I was a boy, we used to actually eat, we'd have violets, little purple violets in a sandwich. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, but the little purple violets are edible. See if I can find one here. Yeah, there's one. So let me grab one here. Beautiful little flower right there. I can't see it. It's not wanting to focus because my face is in the way. Maybe if I put my head out of the thing. Yeah, I can't get it to focus. Doesn't want to focus on it. You can see it pretty good, but uh, so yeah, these are edible. I remember, actually, there's a um, J. A. Townsend, I think, channel on YouTube, and they he talks about um, how they cooked in things in the 18th century, the late 1700s mostly, and um, and I remember he had a recipe for candied violets the one time. They'd make sort of a sugar glaze and then they'd dip the violets into it and it was this really neat uh, kind of a candy thing that you'd give to loved ones or whatever, sort of a special little thing. But uh, a lot of wild edibles out here, which I'm thankful for. Still learning about some of them, but another rant. But um, what do we do, brethren? Well, what did the Christians do when Nero uh, was in control there in Rome? And he was openly persecuting Christians. There's a bunch of trees down back in there, too. Um, you can see some of the broken stumps back in. But what did Christians do when Nero was around? They kept doing what they were supposed to do. Oh, uh, well, Nero made it illegal. You can't worship Jesus Christ anymore. You have to, you know, do what the Romans say. Um, no, uh, not going to do that. As I said in no, another one of the videos, um, we're going to ban the Bible. The Bible's illegal. You have to turn in your King James Bible. No, not doing that. Um, well, you have to turn in your firearms. You can't have guns. Private gun ownership is now illegal. No, I don't trust the government and I don't trust them to protect me 
if uh, we'd be invaded by another country. The BRICS nations decide that they've had enough and that they're going to basically come take America and um, literally take America. And no, I'm not okay with uh, being disarmed for that. That's not happening. And uh, I believe my God will protect me, not um, my constitutional rights. Uh, constitutional rights are just reaffirming what's already there from God. Don't forget that. Um, you can't claim that um, when you get before God, I'll say it this way, you can't say, well, I didn't accept you because I had a constitutional right for freedom of religion and, and therefore I chose my own religion and so you can't, you know, condemn me or something. No. <laughs> you have to understand that the Constitution does not, is not above God. Um, it's just man's way of saying we want to reaffirm what God has done. Again, please understand that. But, uh... <clears throat> Are we going to have some kind of revolutionary war or whatever? I mean, the whole thing is just so confusing right now, where this nation is at. Um, you know, and again, looking at what's going on right now in the political world, and just with the whole electric vehicle thing and global warming and all this other, you know, mass vaccination and everything else. And you just realize how screwed up people are. How much people have messed up. <clears throat> Without Jesus Christ, um, people, you know, man, sinful man, just is, is wicked. So, I guess I've said pretty much everything that needs to be said for this. If you're saved, you already know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you understand where your rights come from and that nobody can take those rights from you that uh, you aren't going to legislate them away and um, <clears throat> no matter what happens you don't have to worry about who's going to be elected oh no what would happen if Biden would get in again well he would ruin the country what happens if Trump gets in he'll ruin the country it'll just be a different uh flavor of ruin so to speak either one is going to be bad for the country <clears throat> now as Christians I will say this we do have power in the political realm because we have prayer the other people don't we have um, standards that are absolute others do not and we can use our standards we can impose our standards on other people because we have a God of absolute truth. And, um, you know, well, you think that your God is better than others. Yes, I do. You think that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Yes, I do. That's what the Bible says. So, I can demand my rights, my God-given rights, and I can demand that whatever politician comes in, I can say, um, we're going to pray about this, and we want you to submit to the, not, I shouldn't say submit, but you need to um, not persecute us for believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if they're going to come out and pretend that they're Christians or whatever, to try to get our votes, well, that's a way of showing that they are submitting and uh, that's a good thing. And again, you know, if we affirm these rights and say, um, you're not going to take our Bibles from us, we're not okay with that. Um, we're not okay with this continuing uh, push towards a cashless society. And again, we're, you know, we're supposed to hinder. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. We're supposed to hinder the Antichrist system, not just. Oh, well, it's coming in. We just can't do anything about it. We're supposed to fight. Our Christian ancestors did. And uh, we shouldn't just say, well, it's the way it's supposed to be, Brother Brian. We're just supposed to go along with it. You know? And uh, so, 
I guess I'll quit now. We're just kind of walking along here. Uh, you can go for the walk along with me and come out here and see the trees and the plants as they're developing. Kind of neat here. That one's kind of further along than a lot of them. These right in here are big tazel nut. That's what they uh, have growing on them. And um, you can eat them, but they're really hard to find when they're just right. You have to almost eat them when they're raw. Uh, not fully ripe. Because if you don't, they'll get wormy or the squirrels will eat them. But there's a lot of beaked hazelnut along here. And going back through the trail there. And uh, this is the an invasive species here. This is called... Japanese honeysuckle, and um, I think there's another name or two for it, but uh, this stuff is invasive, so we try to cut that stuff down, makes these red berries that are not edible, and um, I think that there is some part of it that has a medicinal use, I think, if I remember correctly, but uh, we don't really use it for that. We just like to get rid of them, because it's not, it's an introduced species and introduced species like that will take over areas and crowd out native species and um, sort of a, the illegal immigrants of the plant world. <laughs> but <laughs> another little issue there. And then of course they're trying to get you know illegals to vote and whatever. Why does it even matter? You know, oh, we're going to have illegals voting. Okay, uh, for what purpose? Uh, because our voting system is so fair and we need to swing it the other direction. Uh, doesn't mean anything. National, on the national level, they'll put in whoever they want at this point in time. It's just so openly corrupt. So, I have a lot of strong opinions, if you can't tell. But, um, all right. Well, we're heading back to the this is our trail that we call Blueberry Road. And um, because there's a lot of wild blueberries along it, they're not, of course, ready right now. They won't be ready till July or so, I think. <clears throat> and then uh, we can start going after those. Kind of a weird little thing of trivia here, so to speak. Giving you all kinds of interesting little statements and things here. But um, the black flies that are now starting to get up which tells me I need to get back to the vehicles and, and get down to the office. But the black flies actually help to pollinate the blueberries, the blueberry plants. So they're a pain. They'll fly and they bite and, they, and they'll drink your blood and everything else. Nasty little critters. But they're necessary. Um, I guess kind of like politicians. <laughs> you know, they'll come around and they, they'll bite and they'll try to drain your blood out of you and take control of you but they're necessary in some ways I guess you can't have a society that has no law um, but you just have to remember God's laws are above man's laws so all right well hopefully you don't mind my little rant here but just like to take my viewers along when I'm out going for a walk. You can see the little wild strawberries down here are starting to bloom. So the world is an amazing place when you give God the glory for it. When you look at the birds and the insects and the, the animals and the all the plant life out there, the flora and fauna, as they say, you start to realize just how powerful God is and how creative God is to make the world such an amazing place. You know, and if you're an agnostic out there, you need to at least say, there's a possibility that God is real. I'll grant them that. Um, I just need to know more. I want to know more. That's not a problem. If you're an atheist, well, 
the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. That's an absolute statement. You can't make an absolute statement if you're scientific. Okay? Uh, absolute statement in terms of, in a, you can make it in a closed system, so to speak. You have a jar. You can say there isn't anything in this jar but some oxygen or something like that. Uh, you can isolate what's in a jar. You can't isolate what's in the universe. What's in outer space and in the heavens and whatever you want to say about it. You can't isolate it. Um, so all that you can do is just simply say, I don't know. Be agnostic if you're a scientist. If you're a, a radical nut, well, then you can be an atheist. But I don't recommend that. Um, if you want to be a radical nut, it's better to be a Christian. <laughs> uh, yeah, that way you have something worth fighting for. Not just uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Because that's really all that the atheists have to offer someone like me. You know, you leave your Christian faith, you can come back to the world. No, thank you. I've had enough of the world. Don't want any more. Uh, well, you could watch movies without any convictions. No, thank you. Been there, done that. Uh, you could go have relations with other women or something. No, thank you. No, I love my wife. Uh, you can get drunk. You can do drugs. You could, you know, do whatever you feel like doing. Already did that. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today, as the old hymn says. Luther! Come, Luther. He always goes over to the neighbor's place. I don't know why. Luther. Come, Luther. Come, Luther. Come on. Come on, Luther. There he comes. You can hear him coming. There you go. I know, what a dog. He's a lot like people. I'm just going to keep ranting for a little bit here. A lot of people, they just, uh, they go out and they smell the world and they want to roll in the world and get the world all over them. And uh, occasionally the master calls for them and says, come on, come back. And you better listen when your master's calling you. When the Holy Spirit starts to call you and put some conviction into your heart, that's your master saying, come on back. I want to have fellowship with you. I'm trying to keep you safe. What my dog doesn't understand is out there, he has to cross the road and there's a good chance he'll get hit if he's not careful. And I, as his master, I'm trying to protect him. So... Don't trust the government when the government is tyrannical and wicked. Then you be self-governing under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ, not under secular government. That's the final thought in this video here, this little rant video. As you're out here walking with me in the morning, sharing in God's beautiful creation. And I uh, hope you, that you've enjoyed little walk here and getting to see some wild flowers and some other neat things. And uh, so that it will be it. And we will see you in upcoming videos. As always, thank you for watching.